And we're go. Five, four. Yeah. What's up, y'all? Today I'll be working on um, some new stuff that's going to be coming to the beta version of Songbringer. So now basically the game's released. Um, it's up on Steam, and there's some cool stuff coming in some updates. Um, one of them I'm considering is a sword parry ability. So that would be um, where you can basically use your sword in a different way. That's one um, criticism that a lot of people have mentioned. Or at least actually mostly the press has mentioned this, where um, they say eventually your sword becomes kind of mundane, and that it becomes kind of like a masher where you're just button it button mashing the sword the whole time. So I'm thinking maybe there's a nice way to um, make the sword play a bit more interesting and that would be using this sword parry ability. So it's going to be something I'm just going to experiment with at first. What's up virtual? Exis! Existed! So that's what I'm going to work on today. It's going to be a programming type stream, just playing around with that experiment idea of what would it be like if Songbringer had a sword parry ability. So this is probably would probably be something where you earn it at some point in the game. So like, you know, you earn or find the ability to parry your sword. So at first you don't start with it, but eventually you get this sword parry ability that'll make make sword play hopefully more interesting. Okay, so um, I got to get my code in a state where I can get it checked in because I was working on this bug fix for Linux um, dual monitors. I'll eventually have that up on, on Steam. That's a pretty quick fix once I just get that finished. So let me let me check this kit services.cpp file and then I can commit that and start working on the sword parry. Nice, yes. Um, okay, so as far as mail goes, um, I'm all, it's been, sorry about that, but I, I have had, like, I've been overloaded with communication all weekend. So I've tried to get back to everybody on Twitter um, as much as possible. I've got all the Twitter handled. Um, I've gone back to everybody on the Steam forums as well. So that communication is all caught up to date. Um, email, I'm still behind because most of the freaking emails are like, hey, I saw a Songbringer, can I have a free key, please? And, you know, so it's a lot of those kind of emails, like like over 50, you know, those kinds of emails. So it's like um, a lot to get to. So I will get to that probably by the end of the night. So um, sorry your mail kind of got uh, caught in that whole just crazy inbox I have right now. So, but I will get to you, man. I reply to almost every email. Dommy Killer, what's up, man? Okay, so kit services for Linux. Um, basically, the problem was that on Linux with dual monitors, they work a little bit differently than than I thought. Um, dual monitors on Linux. Um, Linux will, by default, return this huge desktop size if you have two monitors. So you got to like use this special thing called Zinorama to... Um, to check on the actual physical screens you have. Oh, okay, cool, man. Yeah, I'll get to it. Um, oh, so if you're if you're requesting a Steam key, let me give you the the fast link. All right. So instead of having me to like reply to you on email, here's how you would do it, anyways. Um. Where's that link at? Oh, I know where there's one. On the press kit. There it is, key mailer. There you go. Yeah, just use that link and I'll get to your request on Keymailer. That's faster than me emailing you back and all that. 
So, oh yeah, I do have to change the overlay. Um, I guess I could just do that right now. I should just handle that. Where is that overlay graphic? It's like, I think it's in Twitch overlay or something. Cool, the controller setting, a good idea? How, wh what do you mean the controller setting is a good idea? How so? Yes, I'm, I'm the only developer for the game. I do all the music, I do all the art, and I do all the programming. Um, that's not to say I'm, I'm, I'm backed by an amazing team though at Double Eleven. They're the ones helping me publish it for um, consoles and like the Windows 10 store version and stuff like that. They're, the, they're an awesome team. So they're, so I'm working with the team to help me get it on all these platforms. But the core development of Songbringer is just, just me. Oh, so if you don't have a controller, like you, how you would set up your controls. Okay, cool. I'm glad you like that. Some people have criticized it because you can't go back and actually check visually what your settings are. Um, but, you know, I can always add that later. So it's kind of a minor point. Right, so you like that. You like the controller. I like that too. I like where you can calibrate it like that. Um, but some people prefer that list. Some people are like, ah, I'd rather have a list and go through and click each one and change it all. So, or at least be able to see it all at a glance, like what you've already said, and change one thing afterwards. Something like that. Like maybe you could combine that, how it works now, and then once you've already done that once, then you can go back and use a list and ch change one little thing or something. I don't know. There's ways to make it better. Um, okay, I'm looking for a file, um, and it's probably in here, it's probably named Twitch something. It's not that, oh, here it is, the live background. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, it is pretty fast, right? Is that oh that's just okay I gotta make this text there we go oh no wonder I made this into pixel art I cleaned up these pixels a little bit these pixels are ugly yes Tommy killer that is so amazing is it not 32 positive reviews and only one negative review which is I think the person only played for 0.2 hours, which is what, less like less than 15 minutes? And they just gave it a negative review. So yeah, really well received by players, which is ah, oh, it's awesome. I'm so glad people are stoked. And I got some crazy cool ideas to make the to make Songbringer even better. Um, like basically making the sword play more interesting and also making it a little bit easier for people that are having a tough time with it. So I've noticed that some people at the beginning, they're having some, some troubles, you know, like especially people running into enemies because all the enemies do damage when you touch them, which is kind of an homage to the first Zelda. But people are kind of like, I don't know, some people find that to be uh, a gripe of theirs for the game, or at least mostly the press has mentioned that where it's like, oh, I run into things too much. But really it's, I think technically when you look at, when you look at the code, there's nothing ever going on with the hitboxes. The hitboxes never change or anything like that. So I think people are just like, you know, they're just holding down the direction a little bit too long. But there's ways to make it better. So there's an item um, I'm going to be working on where you might have a little bit of like a defensive ability, something like that. Or maybe some kind of ability where you don't get hurt by enemies if you touch them. Something like that. And it would, and it would be something that you get 
maybe even temporarily like you get it for a little while and then it wears off or something like that i don't know there's ways to make people that are kind of having a tough time playing it you know make it easier for them without changing the challenge for other players It would be, it'd be great to have something that, so that you could use the D-pad and the joystick. Uh, I think you can do that. Don't you? Oh, oh, so virtual exists. Okay, so what you're talking about, all you got to do is go in and do the set controls once and bind everything to a D-pad and then go use set controls again, but this time bind to the joystick and you'll have set it up so that you are using both the D-pad and the joystick. So basically, the set controls basically is like adding controls. That needs to be more clear on the input menu. On the input menu, it says set controls for player one or something like that. Think of that like add controls for player one. So yeah, just go, go bind it again and you'll have yeah, and for your other buttons that are going to be the same, like if you have, or if you're using like the A button or the B, you know, the B button, the X button, the Y button, you can just use the same key for those when you rebind it, um, but use a different thing like the analog stick when you're doing the directional pad, and that will add those controls, um, and then you'll have both of them. Yeah, HD, right? That might be user error, kind of. It's just like people just kind of walking into enemies. But there's ways to make it so it's not as much of a problem for those kind of people. You know, those kind of people maybe aren't as used to playing Zelda-like games or action RPGs in general. I'm not sure. But how you doing, man? What's up? Oh, yeah. Some people. Okay, so let's get this... Um, Steam, GOG, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Even though it's not quite out on PlayStation until Tuesday, I'm just going to leave that as it is. Nice. You work on some Songbringer fan art? Chilling today? Dude, I'm excited. That's cool. That would be. I think that'll be the first fan art ever, man. I am humbled. Okay, so that's kind of like crazy pixel art there let's um I'm gonna rasterize it and just clean it up a little bit yeah really yeah I don't think anybody else has submitted any fan art or anything yet I mean it's it's only been out a couple days. Yeah, no, it's on GOG already. Yeah. It's on GOG. You can get it right now on GOG. It's on, it's on the front page of GOG, too. It's been on the front page of um, Steam, too, this weekend, which is really great. Um, I'm very excited about how things are going. It's nice to, it's really nice also to have, um, from my perspective, have most of the work done for the release. It's a really a lot of work, a lot of prepping, you know, there's so much stuff to do and stuff to have right for your launch. So I'm just kind of glad that part's over and I can now like focus on the cool stuff coming in the, in the upcoming updates. I'm really excited to get this stuff out. Yeah, all the all the pixel art in the whole game is handmade. The fonts are handmade. Yeah, the, so check it out. Like, um, here is wait, where is it? Here it is. Like, here's the regular font in the game, right? Here's what all the text and Songbringer is basically made up of. Scott, this covers a lot of the languages except for Japanese, Chinese. Those are separate fonts entirely. They have like so many characters. But this one is all hand pixeled. The other ones, the Japanese one and the, and the Chinese one are not hand pixeled. But maybe in the future we can hand pixel them because I think I think it would 
it would benefit from it being hand pixeled. I'm just trying to clean this up quickly because this is not the not the main point of today's stream. Uh, so this is three years making it. Yep, and I've been um, I've been live streaming a lot of it. So this is the six hundred and six hundred and sixth or six hundred and fifth, something like that. It's over six hundred videos so far. These have all been archived on YouTube and stuff like that. So you can go back and check out the project's development if you're interested in that. It's all here on my YouTube channel. Yeah, it's been a it's been a process, man. So and also there was a Kickstarter for it in 2015. Um, that was an amazing time. Just like, you know, also also a lot of work. Doing a Kickstarter is not easy. But huge payoff. I mean, without without the backing of the Kickstarter backers, people's support back then made this all happen. Without them, this never would have happened. And I'll say it a million times. I'm thankful as hell. That's why everybody's names are on the front menu. When you see all those thanks to backer, thanks to backer, thanks to backer things, I'm thanking them. Also, would not be possible without my amazing publisher, Double Eleven. They're they're incredible. And all y'all, all y'all's comments along the way here on the stream. What's up, Rocket Buddy? Thank you, sweet. You're just downloading right now. Thanks, Mikey T-shirt. What's up, y'all? All right, let's get this, um, this image rendered out, and we'll um, get on to the rest of the stream. I think this was called T Twitch Live Background, and I can just update it live with Game Show. Edit this up. There's this Twitch Live Background thing. Can I just change the file? Oh, it says out now. That's cool. Wonder if I can just press that. Did it fix for you guys? Does it say out now on the on above my head? It did it. Yay! I'm so glad. Cool. All right, great. That's done. Okay, so I'm checking in a little bit of Linux code. I'm working on a little fix here for um, dual monitor support on Linux. I'm just going to actually comment all this code out that I wrote last night and check it in for now so that I can work on the, the cool thing. Okay, so what I had to do basically was add this one library. So this will get pushed up to the beta version or something. Thanks, virtual exist. Bim, bim, bim. Okay, so this is basically, this is essentially the only thing that's changed is I'm adding the Zinorama libraries so far. Okay, that could be checked in. Start fixing Linux dual monitor issue okay so let's get into the core of today's video yay you tried so hard to get used to vim it took me a long time rocket bunny it took me over a year to get used to vim but i'm i'm glad i did what really helped was i actually remapped all my keys for songbringer actually playing songbringer to vim keys so I got used to all the direction keys and stuff like that because I was always moving rock around using Vim keys. So that helped me. I had to do that though, but that was before I ever even learned Vim. I actually just learned the H, J, K, and L keys, which is pretty cool. And if you if you guys are 
into that kind of thing. Vim keys are cool because you never have to move your hands really off of the home row. Well, that's the idea anyway. You still, of course, are going to have to do that. Okay, so to the, to the title of today's video, I want to work on a sword parry ability. This is going to be something that's going to come like in a in a future update to Songbringer, it'll probably be get pushed to the beta branch. So there's going to be a beta branch from now on where um, if you just go into your Steam settings for Songbringer, you can actually change it so it, you can get the beta version or whatever. There's going to be no password on it, so all you got to do is just switch to the beta version. And it'll have some of these cool new features like that I'm working on right now. And then it'll be like, it'll be a while before they get merged into the main version and it gets pushed out to everybody on Steam. So if you want to be one of those people that plays like these new features coming, like this sword parry ability or the shirt item or stuff like that, just switch to the beta branch. Yeah, VS Code's cool. All right, we need a place to try this ability out at. Where the hell is this actually? Okay, so we're in this dungeon. Um, what would be a good enemy to to do this with? Maybe I'm thinking more of like some melee combat style enemies. This might work. So what I'm thinking is you'll you'll basically hold down the sword button and Rock will go into like a parry stance and that will block some damage or something. So it gives you an alternate way to use the sword and it should really help to you know make this the sword play combat more fresh. So the first thing I'm going to try is just the simplest thing where he goes into that that parry stance and then that blocks maybe like one one damage or something like that. Oh, I forgot to save it there. Okay, the sword though has this, this, okay, going to the code for that. All right, I got rid of the sword release ability. So we need to get the... It's the repeat count. I think it's in the function called create main hero. Maybe it's in rocks text file actually. Input flags eight, no, that's not it. Where does it give like the, I think it's repeat max. Oh, this is okay. This is the the manual input component. Well, 
What about this one? Set cooldown. Oh, right. Repeat. Oh, that's when it. Okay, that's just like repeat maxing. And I thought this was what stop. It's stopping like. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna get this hooked up. So there's. The other day, I set it up so the top hat, you can hold down your top hat button and then release it to let send your top hat flying. I kind of want to do a similar thing for the sword. So if you're holding down the sword button, he goes into a parry stance. Um, and that, there was a trick to that. Um, I tried it the other day with using the ghost sword. Okay, but I'm just going to get the abilities set up first or the function set up first. Like, release top hat. Let's also have a K item sword. Call this release sword. Okay, so now we're gonna have a function called release sword that should get called when we release the sword button, but it's not going to because of that issue I was just trying to explore there. Um, so I'm gonna get this set up, first of all. So it's got the function release sword. And we can set up like a breakpoint right here just to verify that this is even getting called. And I don't think it will. So I'm going to run this in debug mode. And it should break there if it does actually get this function, but I don't think it actually will. So the first thing to do will be to get it to actually call that. Whoa, man, it is so hot here. I don't know if anybody else is having heat waves or anything, but damn, in the Bay Area, in the United States here, in the, near San Francisco, it was like 110 yesterday, which is unheard of. Like, it never gets that hot here. In fact, it's, I don't think it's ever been over 100 degrees where I'm at since we've lived here, which we've lived here for like three years now. This is the first time it's ever been over 100. It was all the way like at 110, dude. It's been so hot. So yeah, I'm releasing the sword button. Nothing's ha Wait, something finally happened? Oh, it did. Maybe because of that repeat count. So looking at rocks entity data is input. Or, um, yeah, repeat max for the first, oh, they're all one. The repeat counts are all zero. What? Okay, I think it's this though. If I comment this beta here, I think it should work every time. Yeah, I just released it right there. Press it. Whoa. Forgot about that. Okay, so this works completely different. It's still not triggering the release. I'm just holding down the button and he's just swinging like crazy. Oh, there, finally released that time? It's just some, this is weird. It works, it works, the sword works differently than everything else, so. Because I think it's not setting a cooldown. Is that it? Start attack. Oh, it does have a cooldown. 
It does have a cooldown, yeah. Why does it just keep... Maybe you should check its repeat count right here. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, a lot of that shadow quality and the realism behind the pixels is uh, shaders. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of custom shaders going on that help it look that good. What's up, Spy Man? Uh, quick question. Possible overall map tiles would be unaccessible? Okay, so um, there is a slight chance that could be a bug. But it's probably not. I've fixed many of those kind of bugs where it seemed like tiles were inaccessible. Um, what it usually is, is there's this one dude where there's a secret. And um, you have to, like, solve that, that puzzle. There's a secret, basically, where you can... Gosh, I don't want to give it away. But uh, I could maybe give you a hint if you like. Um... So let me know if you want a hint about that. I'm pretty sure it's probably that, where it's just this one secret area that you have to do a certain thing to get into that secret area. And that will give you the 100% of the overworld. Um, and then your 100% your map achievement comes from all of the overworld and all the dungeons being uncovered. So you got to get all those dungeon areas too in order to get 100% map. But let me know if you want a hint. If it indeed is that. And if you are if you are worried that it is a bug, just you can send me a screenshot of your overworld. If you want to send it right now even, you can send me a screenshot of your overworld map. And um, I can hop into that world really quick and see if it is indeed that secret thing. Yeah, yeah, I stand up. I stand up when I do my live streams. I stand up a little bit over the rest of the day, but most of the time I'm sitting down. So I sit down over in the chair over there mostly. Okay, now to get this so I can just test this out and test out a sword parry. Um, let's, what if we, what if it, the check for repeat max was here? Something like in there. Okay, so you have two of them. Okay, um, yeah, and what, what world seed are you in, too? So let me know what world seed you're at, and I can, I can pull that world up really quick on my screen, too. And a screenshot of yours would really help, too, to see which ones you don't have yet. No, no, I don't. I have a, um, I basically, this, my laptop is sitting inside a closet. Check it out. So... That's your, the computer's in a closet, right, on a, on the top shelf of the closet. And then I've got my keyboard, like, at arm height. And so, yeah. I work mostly with my, with my computer at eye level. Just to keep my, my spine from getting all messed up. No, no worries, man. No worries. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, it's just, okay, that needs to be like this then. So hopefully this works. It's a little bit trickier than the top hat was. The top hat was just freaking super easy to make into a button you could hold down. The sword's a bit different because it's, 
it's always worked a little bit differently because what it favors is you pressing the button, which means your sword attack is like blindingly fast. You know, it's like as fast as it can be. The second you even start pressing a button, it starts some actions off. But this little bit keeps it from repeating too much. What's up, Biter Kid? Kukuriku. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm beginning work on patches and updates for Songbringer. So there'll be a beta branch on Steam, and you'll be able to just, there's no password on it. So if you want to play the beta version on Steam, all you got to do is go into your properties for Songbringer, switch to the beta branch. And you'll be playing all the latest stuff. Like there'll be new items, um, new abilities, and stuff like that. All coming in future updates. But they will be available right away on the beta version. Yeah, that's like... I'm, I'm really... I only know a couple emotes. That's one of them. I know this one. Um... This one, um, that one, um, what's the salt one? I don't remember the salt one. It's going good, man. Oh, is there, is there my channel? Oh, wait, Wiz. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's it, salt, PJ salt. Let me type that one just so I remember it. There's this too. I don't know if you're seeing these on on uh, on yours, but you can get if you have Franker phases, you'll see those. You know these? That's a good one, Pong Champ. Bible thump, totally. I don't I don't know very many emotes. I'm kind of I'm kind of new. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see if it works now. Where it's still oh, you can you still only can press the U sword once. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're back to how it was. Only, it's not hitting any breakpoints, but I didn't run it with the, from Xcode. So let's set a breakpoint here. See what we got now. This is the only... Yeah. The sword is the only thing that uses repeat count anyways. Okay, so it, rolled out. it did the release there on the first one. Yes! Oh, it worked that time. And I'm holding, holding, holding. Let go. Yes! It's working. Okay. Let's do a faster one. Press, let go. Yes! It's working every time now. Oh, that was a fast fix. Nice. Okay. Now we are ready to roll. We got this function being called. Oh. oh, let's check this out. All right. Okay, so there you got that area on the right. Oh, and then one more area there. Okay, I see where you're at. This one I'm curious about. Oh, I can see that, yeah. The seed is strobe. Okay, so I'm going to be going in there right now, Spy Man. So if you don't want it spoiled, if you don't want it spoiled, you might want to, like, stop looking for a minute, and then I'll chat back at you when it's, when I, when I figure it out. So I'm going to, I'm going to jump into this world right now and go to those two areas and figure out what it is. So, spoiler alert. Oh, it's fine? Okay, cool. 
All right, so World Seed Strobe. And this one is 15, 14, 13, 1, 2. Oh yeah, so that one, this one on the bottom, I'm at, I'm right there right now. Um, this one is the secret, so this require, requires you to do something. At least this hasn't been spoiled how to get into it. So yeah, that's a secret. If you, if you do want me to spoil how to get to that, I can let you know. Um, let's see, the next one is 15, 1, 2, 3, 4. Sometimes there's multiple of these ultra, these are called like ultra secret areas or big, you know, the, the secret areas on the overworld. This one, let's see where we got it. Um, oh yeah, so this is one of the, one of the same things. So yeah, they're both that kind of secret. Yeah, yeah. So they're both, they're both, once you learn how to get into one of those, you will know how to get into both of them. And uh, if you'd like me to ch tell you how to do it, I can. And it's definitely not a bug, so. No, it's different guy, different guy. Yeah, so there's a, the guy that walks around and disappears. That's the dude that you, you get the meditation skill from and all that. And this guy is just an enemy dude that plays guitar. Really, that's all it is. And there's a and there's more. There's more, but cool, cool. Right, not zero. Yeah, it's a different guy. Oh wait, do you mean not zero? What you're talking about? Okay, we've got a function in place where we can release the sword. So how about if you're holding the sword? So he'll need to go into some kind of like, he needs to go into a parry stance and he needs to like somehow parry things too. This is definitely this is definitely more than I can accomplish in one stream, but I can get this started at least. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you thought he was the board, the bard. Thank you, Neverland Dreams. I appreciate that so much. It's been a it's been three years in the making. I'm really excited to finally have Songbringer out and released, and I'm excited to now work on some updates and stuff for it and make it even better. Whatever I can do to improve it, I will. <clears throat> right on, man. Appreciate that. Okay, what would be the next step then? We've got it so we can, if it just. If it just like when, if maybe if he gained a shield and used a different stance, it would be, it would work. Let's, let's, oh, I guess the stance would be the first thing. If he can go into a different animation when he starts holding this and then gets out of that animation, then that's really the, the beginning of it. Oh, you're right. I haven't updated my Twitch description in a while. Um, let me add that to my list to do. So, um, Biter Kid, was it, one sec, I'll, I'll get to, 
I'll get it open again. Oh, it was back, um, wow, son of a, sorry, I closed the chat again, I do this all the time, I'm like, whoops, okay, so that was down near 13, Thirteen one or 2 or something. That guy. So is it, was it that guy you're talking about? Biter kid? I'll run it again. If this is the guy you're talking about, yeah, this is the bard. There he is. He's just one of the drops guys with a guitar, basically. I'll run it one more time in case I got you didn't get to see that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the bard. Oh uh, no, you're not crazy. Okay, so we'll add some code. So he goes into um, go into parry stance. So you swing the sword, which means you got a melee attack queued up. You want to do the next animation, basically. Huh. This is going to be kind of experimental code. Um, e. I think we want to set render dot next animation. I think he already has a parry. Animation? This is for when you fight. Yeah, there's a parry animation already. It's not that great, it could be better. But at least it'll, it'll suffice for today's, like, experimentation. Okay, let's see if this works. Basically, if this does work, I can hold down the sword button and he should go into a parry stance. There'll be a lot of things to get right with this though, you know, like making sure you can't use other buttons when you are in the parry stance, stuff like that. Oh yeah, he did. Well, it, it doesn't work if I root. Okay, so I got it. Yeah, so there he goes into his into like a parry stance, sort of. But he always faces south, so I need to like do some custom animations for it. And I need a bit. It needs to not happen if you are. Okay, so if you release the sword. And. 
And um, if you're doing a parry, So if you do have parry, and you release the sword, that means you've already gone into the parry stance, and releasing the sword, you can now go back into an idol. Otherwise, if you haven't yet gone into the parry stance, It's the same thing. Basically, you're, you want to erase out both and set it to idle. Okay, let's see if that is working. Hold it down, I let go. Oh, he still went into the parry. Hmm. Okay, at least I got a debug then. Uh, don't worry, it's a it's mostly a development stream, so it's not really like a. You know how when you're watching Twitch and you're on somebody's channel where they're playing games there's usually a lot more people chatting in a in a game playing type stream versus something like this where it's a game dev type stream yeah it's so that's why it's it's a little bit quiet sometimes it's mostly just because it's a development stream i do the the other day i did stream under the songbringer game i actually just played the game and that was you know just like you would expect on twitch where there's lots of people chatting and new faces and stuff. Okay, Perry. Press it, release it. Oh, what? Oh no, now it's not getting into this function now? Say it ain't so. It is, yeah, it is pretty active, right? For a game dev. Right, it's a good one. Well, now it's going to be working. Oh, now it's working. Okay. Sometimes you just have to recompile Xcode, force it to recompile. We got to okay. So repeat counts on. That's that too. Um. Oh, okay. What animations does he have? Render. Melee two next animation parry. Oh, so it's gonna do this, but it might not. Oh yeah, no, it should be erasing the next parry. Next key is nothing.
Right, so it's yeah, it's setting the animation to idle to, setting its next animation to nothing. It's clearing that out. Yeah, virtual. See you, man. Later. <laughs> maybe it does. Maybe it just works now. Hold on. I'll be right back. All right, so the question is, why doesn't it... Hold on, what if, what if it was just like that? Every time you release the sword, cancel the animation.
would be easier if I was actually not fighting enemies. So we'll go to the entrance of this dungeon. Oh yeah, that works. So if I hold down the button, he's like parrying, stance, I let go, he goes back to normal. That's weird. This should work, like that. Steve Tramby! What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? How's everything? Yeah. Yeah, so the, the yeah, release day was great, man. Did a I did a live stream here where I did a, a permanent speed run. Um the release is going really well. I'm really excited about it. Um especially player reviews have been awesome. Like it's like thirty two reviews so far, and only one was negative, and it was like insubstantial it's like this one person played the game for less than 15 minutes so it's been really amazing seeing how positive people are receiving the game um and now i'm excited to start working on some updates stuff like that some patches and and little new features new items and stuff like that so i've seen a lot of people play the game on twitch this weekend that's been really neat um yeah, the release is going well, so I'm, I'm very excited. Yeah, and, it's, and it, what's really great too is just to be finally done with all the, all the work involved with launching a game. It's like so much, so many little things you got to pay attention to and, you know, lots of work on everybody's platform. Everybody's website has like some work to do and stuff involved. That's really nice to have that all finished. What's up, Concrete Ice Cream? Um, if you send me, uh, if you send me an email, I can look into what's going on. Um, what I could probably tell you though right away is that you probably it's probably that I messed up, um, and so I made a mistake on the back end with Humble Bundle and basically accidentally gave some people two keys when they only only ordered one. So, if that's the case with you, and it probably is. Um, you got an extra key, it's yours, do whatever you want with it, and it's just my bad. I accident it's a, the only person that's losing out here is me, but it's it's considered a gift. Give it away to a friend or play it yourself out on a different platform or something like that, or whatever you want to do with the key, it's yours. Did this work? Can't remember. Sweet man, I'm glad to hear that. It's been really fun to make Songbringer, and I'm really just excited to be re be releasing it now. I mean, it's it's um it's very rewarding, very very fulfilling. So thank you. Right. Okay, this is really weird. If it doesn't... If... Oh, I guess we could set a breakpoint. Else, set a breakpoint. We'll figure out why some third case is not working there.
Yeah, okay, well that's one of your unsheathing. So that shouldn't work anyways. Okay, so going to the parry stance, holding down the button, let go of the button. And yes, okay, it's neither of what? Oh, I get it now. Okay, so what animation is running here? Is it nothing? That's probably what it is. It has like no animation left. Yeah, that's what it is. Animation is empty because it already did its its parry. Okay. So there's three cases here. Three cases to deal with, and they all require the same kind of solution. So if it's currently doing the parry animation, or it's about to do the parry animation, or the current animation is empty, meaning that you're, you've already done the parry animation, all of those are what trigger you to reset the animation. So that should work. Now I'll probably need to set some kind of bit for this. Like I'll add some input bit or something like that 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 basically signifies that the player should be in the parry stance so that it doesn't get all willy-nilly. Because some you can, by trying to trek things with just the animation can get really messed up pretty easily. You gotta really have some kind of like solid input bit or something to, to a flag, something like that. There we go. Now, that's one thing I'm still curious about. If I press and release really fast, it goes into the parry stand still. I'm, I'm, because I'm using brackets on a new line. I love brackets on a new line. Almond style? <laughs> right, I hear you though. Actually, when I, in my earlier days as a programmer, I used to use the K and R style where you got this bracket, the opening brace or whatever on the line before. Okay, the first one I want to ignore, then I want to tap and release it really fast. Okay, why didn't it trigger that? It's weird. Oh, is it, is it because it's before the cooldown? That's probably what it is. It's cooling down still. <laughs> Am I calling you a noob? No! Not at all. I'm just saying that in my younger days, I thought it was cool, personally, to have the braces on one line to um, to make things more dense and compact, like your code. But these days, I prefer the brace on the next line just because of margin. It gives you a little margin between sections of code. So when I'm scanning things really quickly, like this, you know, going through a whole file. There's just a little bit more margin, which allows me to, you know, more distinctly say, oh, look, there's a block, uh, you know, like there's a, there's everything in this indented is a block, blah, blah, blah. These are bad examples right here because there's no braces at all. You, just, you catch my drift, right? Ah, 
so is it the cooldown? Does it still have a... It's almost like it needs to queue up some kind of... Like, like, needs to like queue up the parry or have a hold button to do the parry. Right? Yes, yeah, but it's already working. Sleep it ugly. Ah, oh, man. I think I might need to actually let this code sit for a while. Think about how to do this sword parry the right way. Because I, I either need to create a, another function where you can hold the button, which would kind of change the whole input system, or add a flag. I don't know. Right on. Various apps. 64-bit stuff. Cool, man. I hope things are going well for you. Thank you. Yeah, man, I appreciate that. Appreciate the congratulations so much. It's so awesome, dude. Thanks for saying that. Nice, man. Armin, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, PS4 is coming out on Tuesday. No, see, there's no stance. There's no entity state yet. That's the thing. I think I need to think about it for a minute because, like, the parry stance, like, this is something that's completely new, right? It's something I'm experimenting with right now for the first time. And I'm thinking it's. I might need to kind of rewrite some code or I could get away with it. Oh, God, must have, oh, there's got to be a way to try this right now. Like, if you get some... I guess I could just ignore the fact that it's not working perfectly and add to the player's shield hit points. All right, let's try that. E dot health dot shield hit points plus equals four. Or I mean life per container or something like that. And then when you're done with the parry stance, it resets. That would be kind of how it works. Oh, no, no, it doesn't. So the purpose of the shield is to block attacks. The parry does too. But the thing is that the parry thing gives you a different way to use the sword, right? You're using the sword button to block an attack more. The the sword you can the sword parry you would be able to use in the heat of battle, right? While you're battling using your combat, and it helps you to, and it would help to make the combat more interesting. The shield is something you are not you can't use during combat. You have to stand still. So it, it's a different thing, right? It, it, they both accomplish the same thing, but in different ways. So it kind of gives you a more variety to the combat, I would think. That's why I want to try it out right here, right now. And maybe that maybe that'll work. It's like I got a shield hit points of four. Let's see if this works with some enemies. In fact, I think I need to make this a little more explicit. So we'll do this. A debug alert. It'll say every time. Parrying. No more parrying.
So I'm still parrying. It's like impossible to get hit by these guys. Hit me! Oh yeah, yeah! I mean, he didn't do any animations or anything, but that would essentially be what's going on. Oh, that time I got hurt? I'm still holding the button, but... Yeah, that time I got hurt. Okay, so it only blocks like up to one tooth. That's cool. Maybe this does work. So like, what if I swing the sword here and stand here and let these guys hit me? Right? Yeah, if he did an animation, it would be cool. Let's see if it, let's see if we can get him to hit it, do an animation. Yeah, yeah. You know what? This probably does need an input thing. An input bit or an attack bit, maybe. Oh, what happened? I closed my my eye term. Maybe an attack component bit. Yeah, the attack components have flags. So your attack would be you would have the attack flag carrying and then you could query that every time you release Okay, let's try it. I need a bit, first of all. That's going to require compiling everything, so we'll get that started. So yeah, so now we've got a bit that can be applied really like really reliably can add this bit to the attack component and that way it's not as unreliable as an animation um, I might need to hook it up as a word but actually I'm just gonna note it as a possible word because it's more of a dynamic thing at runtime so it's not really something you want to be set in a in a property file. Okay, and then going back to the input system, we could set a bit or set that bit here. E health dot no e dot attack dot flags. We have the Parrying bit, which means we, it's it's a lot more easy to use this too in other systems. Here's where we'll clear that bit. Okay, so now. Now it's possible for other systems to know whether he's in, he should technically be in the parrying stance. And I, I want what to happen here is like when an enemy hits you while you're in the parrying stance and you still have some shield hit points left, um, it should, you should do some kind of parry animation. It would kind of be like the clash, actually, in the attack system when it calls on attack clash.
This is kind of what I want to happen here is this attack clash thing. Take attack clash. This is where I think it gets called. Yeah. Tick attack clash. Where does that get called? Okay, this would have to be as long as the entity doesn't have parrying, or if the entity does not have parrying, then you need to check for attack clash. If you do have parrying, then you can do this on attack clash. And it would be you need to tick through all. It would be tick not attacking. Game shield if not moving. Okay, so this would be a do parry. If has bits e dot attack dot flags k attack parrying and And we still have some shield hit points. And we're within, we're colliding. What gets called first again? Tick. Um, is it attack system? Collision system becomes, is before. Okay, so it goes collision, attack, and then later move. So we've, Right, an entity has, hasn't moved yet. I guess they could. Uh, I guess this might work if we just say if collision system get collision for this entity is collision mask that should be it okay and we have a collision we're gonna do tick or on attack clash Wait. He gets greater than zero. Do the on attack. Hopefully that makes it into like an active thing.
bad area for that. Give me some better enemies. This guy! This guy would be the perfect guy to do it with. Doesn't seem to be working. Oh, there, it did work there. It only seems to work though. Ah, it's not really working right. be a better place for this. This one might actually be nice here. So, parry. See, it's, it's working, but only when I'm like swinging the sword for some reason. Does the whole parry. Oh, there, I worked that time. Oh yeah, yeah, there it goes. I'm parrying. Oh, these guys are getting all messed up like crazy though, look at them. Once they parry an attack, they get all weird. Ah, this is gonna be some work to get this one done, but I'm excited about this ability. Fight, you know, fighting the shadows, those guys. Ah, well this is off to a good start. They got afraid. They did. They're like, ah, you parried. Now I'm afraid. Ugh, I think I gotta. I think I gotta sit down for a minute though and get some lunch already. I know this is probably a short stream, but whew, it's been a busy weekend. So I think I'm gonna get going. But this is a pretty good start, right? It's like kind of off to a. I'll probably need to like get stash this and come back to it at some point. But um. This will be cool. This will be like a nice ability to add to the upcoming updates for Songbringer and stuff. Just a way a way to make combat more interesting and also give you a defensive ability and also just just making making using the sword more interesting. There's another way to use the sword. Yeah, it's it's starting to it's starting to look right almost when when you hold like you just meant to hold down your sword and that's the parry. Yeah, thanks guys. Thanks for joining the stream today. Appreciate you all. Thanks for watching. I will enjoy lunch immensely. I always do. <laughs> I love food, man. What can I say? Food and I are codependent. So yeah, we'll catch y'all next time. Thanks for watching.